Then we can take it to the other room and test it. The other way that we make it. different polymer blends to achieve the same thing in a tire. You can go from synthetic rubber, you can have natural rubber. This stuff is actually literally put in a smoker to dry. <laughs> Call it rib smoke tea. It smells like a barbecue. <laughs> different types of powder. I wouldn't touch them because you all want to walk out clean today. <laughs> but the polymer itself, there's what? How many different kinds of polymers? These, everything like different here. SBR and... Yeah, styrene butadiene, you've got regular butadiene, you've got natural rubber, butyl rubber, all different structures of the same kind of rubber. This will give us on this graph, you can see it gives us the elongation and the tensile strength of this rubber. The ozone uh, is a gas in the atmosphere that attacks rubber and causes cracks in rubber. Tyler Anderson, and he's going to show you some of our uh, Basically, it's a grid of piezoelectric sensors. There's about 330,000 individual sensors on this grid, and each one measures uh, vertical force on it. So, as you can see, the tire loaded on here, you can actually see the footprint on the display. <laughs> It'll go anywhere from 85 degrees C all the way down to negative 80 degrees C. Uh, I had it on earlier. It's not very cold anymore. It's warmed back up. But we use this for a lot of um, high and low temperature compounding analysis. We also use this for flat spot measurements. Uh, basically, you take a tire, load it on a load stand, and roll it in there and bake the tire. Kind of uh, is an analogy of your car sitting in an airport in Arizona for, for a week or something like that. Come in. So this is a sample. This is a sample of a tire carving, hand carving that you do, and we can lay out patterns and do prototype work on this without getting a mold. This is all. Oh yeah. I'm up. Yep. It will actually scan the tire in 3D space. And this arm here has laser encoder joints in every point. 
So it knows exactly where it is in space at all times. So basically, you can end up and you can get a display like this, where we have here, where this is actually a scan of this tire in 3D space. So if we, actually, we can actually take this arm, and if we go over on this side of the tire here, and if you see, see the blue laser line on there? If we take this, we can actually scan this tire, and you'll be able to see the display where it actually pulls it into 3D space. Hopefully we'll get to a million cycles, but a lot of the samples will, will break after like 30,000 or 50,000 cycles. Um, some will go several hundred thousand cycles. We usually stop the test after a million cycles, which takes about three days to run the test. Well, that's just a fatigue to failure. Um, we have a few other instruments in the lab. Caitlin, uh, you want to do the EDS? Um, Foyer Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, um, FTIR. Um, it, we use this for polymer analysis um, or to identify the type of polymer. We'll take a piece of rubber and put it in here. Uh, the infrared light shines up on it, shines back, goes back down, and then we get an absorption spectra. And then from this absorption spectra, we'll search through libraries. Uh, we can and it'll, and it'll tell us what type of polymer uh, is being used. In this, in this particular case, uh, this is a very strong signal for styrene, so this is an SBR rubber. We get we get the polymer here. We get the softener. We get the, um, the all the inorganics from that instrument. Uh, the TGA downstairs gives us a global picture of how much polymer, how much carbon, how much ash. The ash is analyzed there, how much softener comes out. So we get we take we get take the polymer.